Well, you're talking about the once a year <coughs> census by the county. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about do the people who actually show up, do they sign their name on yeah. like a guest register yeah. the yeah. evening that they're there? Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. kind of thing that I think is very useful. In and out. That's so it. what I'm hearing from you is make sure that there's some registry of who's coming and going. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Great. Great. Yes, and then. Okay. I just I looked up the uh, registry information. Oregon State, uh, the sex offenders are registered through the Oregon State Police. Uh, the state of Oregon has a three-tier system. Okay, the third tier are predatory sex offenders. Predatory sex offenders are not allowed around school grounds and stuff like that. You can look those people up on the Oregon State <laughs> Registry. The ones that are not classified as predatory is one and two, and there's no restrictions on those. But if you're a homeless person, how do you show where you're living? If you're a predator, you can't say, I'm we're living in this home. Well, they should be registering there, and there's none registered there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's so, that's the thing is yeah. uh, they have to register, and if they're living there and they're not registered, they're, they're violating the law. Is, that, is there something that you would like us to capture? Well, the, there was questions about the sex offenders, if they're allowed around schools and yeah. stuff like that. So that was information then for those who are wondering? Right. Okay. Okay, just wanted to check in case there's anything you want me to capture yeah. too. And, and you've been reading the event here. I'm listening to people keep saying, shuffling these people to Buffalo. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody that lives in this area say anything about shuffling to Buffalo. I live right across the street. I wake up in the morning, I look out the blinds, and I see these poor kids out there freezing their tails off in the rain. But I also see them step across the line, drink a beer, step back off over, and then go in, go back over. I, I see, nobody's trying to get rid of them. All, we're, all I think we're asking for is supervision, <coughs> supervision and simple respect from the people that use that facility. There are, there are two churches that have their church there. I think one on Saturday evening and one on Sunday. Now, all of us could be just bad people and we don't like these people and let's get rid of them. But my question is, the churches that are there, it gets cleaned up before their church services. So, when their church services, they show up to have their service there and there's needles out in front of the door. So there's beer bottles sitting out there. How how long are these churches going to stay in that facility? I don't think they're going to put up with it. So are they bad people because they want this church to straighten it up? Or simple simple respect. You can't get one of those. I'm not going to say that. Thank you. 
I think you can get the pizza here. Yeah. Okay. That you would like to I'll touch up on the subject. Portland, pa Portland Parks found the most dangerous things around their parks is a whole lot of needles. Um, they're going to shoot up whether they, whether they, whether there's a place to put the stuff or not. They just drop it where they want to. So, is so the thing is. Mm -hmm. and for them not to tolerate the alcohol and not to tolerate the drug use, mm -hmm. there's going to be zero tolerance for doing drugs, you're out. So why would we provide a syringe box? You can't have okay, a bunch of hands go up. Let me let you respond first mm -hmm. instead of talking about it, and then I'll, I'll get to you. Because what's going to happen is they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna use, whether it's on the property or down the street or at a park, they're going to use. If there's no place to put it, it's going to go on the ground somewhere, a park, recreation area, someone's backyard, you know, where their kids or pets could wind up getting stabbed by the needle, you know. So I'm hearing, so what I'm hearing is, I don't like the idea of putting a box there because it says you can use drugs to dispose of your needle properly. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I'm hearing, hold on, and then I'm hearing from others, hold on, and then I'm hearing from others say that if you don't provide them a box because they're doing drugs anyways, the needles will be on the ground. Right. So, okay, so I'm hearing both of those. Is there a way, before we move on, is there a way that we can address that, that everybody is in agreement about the box? A drug zone. 
and so a drug-free zone, as far as the disposal boxes are concerned, is there a way to address it on here so the church knows that not everybody's in agreement? So just take it off the drug-free zone. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Is anybody opposed? Is anybody opposed? And I, there are other hands up uh, before you. Is anybody opposed to scratching off the, putting the boxes? And the hands that are up are the ones that are opposed. Okay, just make sure. Okay, other other options to having the needle box. You're introducing a liability issue for a panel room because people handling them have to have the right for that time. Okay, so I heard, and I saw your hand up, but there were a couple before people. Okay, and so uh, go ahead. So I wanted to, another thing on the list, uh, so the general one over here is that some of us apparently have been in this conversation a year and a half ago, and yet some of us are back in this conversation again. So my concern and what I would like on the list is what went wrong? Why are we having this conversation again? If we can get that, if we get that on the list so we can learn from our mistakes yeah, we didn't. and what worked, what didn't work. How would you capture that on the list? Okay. So what? I can get that captured. Why are we why are we having this conversation again? What but we passed this out a year and a half ago. How come we're here again? He was gone. So did it did the issues get resolved a year and a half ago? So how can that be how can we capture that? Okay. Okay. He was here. Okay. 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 How can you capture that? What is it? What is it? I would say, why are we here again? Or what is the progress? Why are we here again? Through? We need some substantial follow-up so after you, the okay, Yeah, well, so what? you do not want to repeat the same thing again. Well, it's been a year and a half ago when we had that meeting and we attended. It went downhill from there. Right, yeah. It went straight downhill. Quite a few hands from the door. There's a gentleman that we haven't heard from yet. Why don't we just demand accountability in this place that's causing the issue? Demand it. So, next to accountability, demand do we have a quick demand? After a year and a half, demand it, or else something's going to go a little bit more severe. And I apologize for that. They'll bring over the torches. The other thing that I want to bring up is that we're not going to be so you Santa Barbara put a big old drug box out in front of the, one of their hospitals mm -hmm. and then we'll drop off any drug at all, heroin, meth, whatever, it's anonymous. Mm -hmm. You dump it in there, it looks like a big old mailbox, but you can't reach in. Right? Yeah. Works perfect. Nowhere does it, nowhere does it say that we, they never came up with the idea that we condone drugs because you can dro drop it off here or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't, they, don't they have treatment plans? He's not certified. He's not certified. Yeah. 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 Are we talking about these resources? Where are all these resources you're talking about? They're not there. No. They have things like free house and on a whim stepping forward because there aren't all these people no. or there aren't all these services. And yes, and I would agree. They're everywhere right. and they're free. So, did you get the opportunity? Yeah, so my point is, is that these are disabilities, and I'd like to remind everyone to to look at it as a disability. It, it, at least, even if you disagree right. with me, consider the possibility that it can be classified as a disability. I do understand the problems trained that. I do understand it's not popular, but that is what we're doing. Hold on, hold on. You had your hand up, Asia. I'll buy a needle exchange. Right. Hey, and uh, the used needle can be disposed of properly.
Let me make sure I understand you. Because I think I'm, he I'm hearing this from uh, a lot I'm of people. I mean, I, I haven't been part of the part of the thing. I understand that, that addiction is a disease and it is, but I also know from being around an addict that if you open the door and you allow them to do what they want to do, that is only enabling their issue. It is not helping them. And it, then it's opening the door to everybody that's around them that it's not that we're not a community that wants to help, but we should not be affected by that because somebody's opening the doors and it's not mandated. They walk, they walk across the street. So I'm, I'm hearing there's an opening. It's the person that's holding the place. He should be responsible for mandating it. It should not be us to have to step up as a community and mandate and, and, and a facility that we did not open. As a community, we can help. But we're, you're talking about a facility that you're opening up and saying it's a free for all. But hey, you all as a community need to step in and, and volunteer and, and run this place that I've owned from the mind of stepping away and not taking accountability. That, that's my issue. I and agree he's with not her. taking responsibility yeah, for the facility yeah. and accountability. So, I'm, so here's what I'm hearing, and I've heard this quite a few times that, that what kind of what Rob said them being a good neighbor, but on top of them being a good neighbor, them providing services yeah, he's not in the right way, and having he's accountability. Not and care of what he started. He's expecting us all to do that. I mean, that's basically what I'm seeing from this. is really disturbing to me as to hear everything that's going on. It's really disturbing. It makes me not safe. It makes me feel unsafe. And it's not that I don't have a heart for people that have an issue. My issue, though, is that if I'm in my home and somebody's open the facilities up the road saying, come on in, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to worry about you doing drugs, doing this or that, but hey, go through the community. And then I'm in my home, you know, I, I have an open heart to, I understand the disease, I understand the community, but you're looking at us as a community and saying, hey, this Steve guy opened the facility, but he's hands off. And you're not asking us to be hands off. We didn't, we didn't not ask for them to open, they're not telling them to fight. We're wanting him to step up and take responsibility for what he started. So I'm hearing the priority is that this facility needs to get it back. It does. It needs to get it back. Okay. Hold on. I, you had your hand up next. So I just, you know, I'll help take everyone else understand. I mean, it's not as easy to get help as you think. There really is like one detox center, and you have to stand in line for like five or six days. I agree, though, on her side, that it, we can't fix the whole homeless and drug problem in our community of North Carolina, and we didn't ask for it to be put right there and be unsupervised like that. And that's really frustrating part. I just, I just think it's important for everyone to know that, you know, when you go to get help, you think, oh, I can just call the phone and tell someone I need help, but they're just like, it's, it's, it's really hard to get help. And I do that. The addicts don't think they need help. Some of them, you know, just need to be being sick and to be able to function, and I get that. Like, I totally understand. And it's an enabling environment. Yes. And yeah. that's, the, that's, to me, is the problem. I have an open heart as far as I understand the yes. But when you're opening a facility that is unmanaged, that's the addictive way. And is it a homeless shelter or a drug shelter? I mean, if you're aware of that, so one little community problem is like this big, big community problem. Yeah. So let me, let me recap the discussion here and see if everybody understands everybody. Okay, so I've heard, I'd like them to be a good neighbor. I want to be safe in my neighborhood. I've heard, I'd like to see the community come together and help and give back as well. I've heard, I want to make sure they get their act together first. They need to be providing services. They need to have the resources to do that. Right? And their qualifications for it. And they need to have the qualifications. And so there's different views in here of what to do about the situation. Uh, but everybody wish it is. So if it is just like, okay, I am a church and I open my door to help homeless people, or is it, I'm this guy and I'm going to open this big drug rehab facility. Yeah. Again, it goes back to the, what am I volunteering for? I don't know what his whole purpose and what the whole idea or Neither his mission. So, so before, before I take any more hands, is there anything that you feel like has not yet been expressed? I think the one thing we haven't put up there is, from what I'm hearing, is that we don't trust who's leading this um, to lead us to help. You know, we're the community, everyone's saying that we need to have the community help, but through issues that have happened in the past and other meetings, we don't, we've lost trust in him that that there is a that there's 
will be leadership um, or any type of, you know, helping us to help properly. He's been the shepherd herding in his flock, and now all of a sudden the flock has gone wild. Yeah, and so we, we, we put the rest in the leadership, so we, he's lost our trust. So, so losing his trust, and I'll get you just one. Is there, is there anything else? that has not been captured yet. And it's not a response, but it has not been captured. Because I saw your hand, your hand, and then I saw you. I can't believe that. I had a conversation with Steve about the prior meeting, because I've been here. And what he told me is that, first of all, he is more than willing and anxious to meet with anybody who wants to talk to him about this stuff. And the prior meeting went wrong because whoever those people were that were there were literally screaming at him for an hour and a half in his face. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would be about ready to take someone out. The man is lying. Yes, he is lying. I'm lying. there. I am just telling you what Steve told me. Okay, and just and maybe, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's your perception. And maybe his perception is different. I was not there. Just I'm last not day. So let, let's pick the thing that we've seen first. That might be helpful. Okay. okay. So let me make sure I capture everything. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Uh, that's your first yes. hand account. Or no. Yes and no. Um, <laughs> Give it a shot. Steve takes in the homeless people that no one else will touch. So that is something to know also. So you are, this is, you know, there's levels of dynamic here. That's one of them. That literally, you know, and I can say that because I've seen messages in my group that's involved with some of this stuff. I've seen messages about that. So that's something to consider too, that those folks also need somewhere to go. And Steve is trying to reach out that way. Shouldn't be okay, by a school. There's constitution going on there. Uh, the back porch of the annex was open. It's a, a partial close-in porch. In and out all day long. The back porch. I don't know who on the property decided to board part of it up and put lattice so no one from the street could see it there. And then they put a door on there. The door get, gets kicked in. They go in there, have their sex, come back out with their pants halfway down, right in the middle street of Gleason there, all open, no fences. You know, if you put a 10-foot fence up, board fence across the whole front of the property, that would satisfy us, I think. So let me interrupt you there. Uh, so we've, we've heard the piece about prostitution, and, I'm not, and I don't want to minimize that. Uh, did I hear uh, an option, though, about putting a fence up? Was that a, a well, option? Well, that, that's, 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 that's for that's for I'm just pieces, checking you know, it. know, that's just a com comment. Okay. Then they would think they were in prison, and they wouldn't probably even go to that place. Okay. I just want to check for new information, <laughs> new information that you feel like has not been captured yet, so we don't keep circling the same issues, okay? And, and so you're next, and then you're second. Uh, I'm next. Oh, yeah. Yes, you. We need to address the roots of um, poverty, the issue of poverty. If we address, like, why these people are doing drugs or why they became alcoholics, that would be a big step for the community. And then we can actually address other problems that are layers and layers and layers. You know, poverty's got layers and layers and layers. Like, we can have a one-sided judgment. Oh, that's a crazy drug addict lady, but what if um, she did those drugs because she went through a harsh life, was abused. You know, people do these drugs because, and they're alcoholics because they want to, they want to get rid of all those emotions and crap. So we address that big time. And if we eradicate poverty in some way, we need to be aggressive about eradicating poverty. And the homeless problem, all these drugs and alcohol issues won't be such a big problem anymore. So, so I understand what you're saying, uh, and I still have you in that. So that, I, so I understand you're saying that there's really a bigger problem there. Yes. And this forum is for this specific problem, but if you could get to the bigger problem, it would resolve it. Is that what you're trying yes, to say? Yes, right okay. down to the very roots. Okay. Thank you, and and do not forget about it. Okay. Just to go back to 
what she had just commented. Um, just two weeks ago, I went over to try to talk to Pastor Steve in a very peaceful manner, and I introduced myself once again. We've known each other for quite a while. And I told him, hey, Steve, you know, I've heard that there's a neighborhood association meeting getting together, and I said, I'm here to help you in any way I can, but I want things to improve for all of us, not just you. And I went to shake his hand, and he wouldn't shake my hand. He said, either you're on here to help me, or you're here to help the neighborhood. And I looked at him, and I go, but there's no, I'm here for everybody. And he wouldn't shake my hand. So this is the gentleman that you said, we were yelling at him at that first meeting. There was no yelling at that meeting at all. None, zero yelling. It's, a, it's an exaggeration. And it's like we're being made to look like the bad people and we're not bad people. I just tried to reach out to him two weeks ago and he wouldn't touch my hand. Well, you had, oh, your, you had, your, you had your RV parked in his driveway. That was so, an RV. Oh, we just bought it. Oh, that just bought it. It was parked over there in his, in his driveway. What I can capture what so, you're saying yeah. is that you tried to reach out and that experience was not good for you. No, it wasn't. And I have heard you say that it's a different experience for you. Okay. And I don't see you changing each other's minds at this meeting. Yeah, that's my group. Okay. My group and myself have had a very different experience with both of you and all of the and I do have a question. If, if everybody would like to have a much better experience with Steve and the group that's there, it sounds like we all say yes. Yeah. Yeah. We would like to have a very different experience. Okay. Okay. Is there, did somebody else have their hand up? Okay, but the piece that when we say uh, accountability, the rules need to be followed, 
and uh, the follow-up piece is to make sure that they're not just saying you can't come back, but actually contacting the appropriate authority. Yeah, well, according to the sanctuary, they do have rules. They, they do have rules down there, but like you say, there's no accountability because they're not enforced. Do you have anything, I'm sorry to interrupt, no. but I want to make sure we get to everybody. Do you have any new for the information list? for that list? I don't think so. Okay. And, and because I did hear you say that you said two and a half hours, is there any new information so you're not repeating anything? And I understand this is serious stuff. This is where you live. This is where you pay your mortgage. This is where you're raising your family. So I understand there's a lot to that. Is there anything that we have not wrapped this point? I think a suggestion for all of you, in my opinion, is besides taking these to Steve, I think Steve needs to come to you and explain himself. Explain the situation that is going on. Because I've been to the church for meetings and things, and I don't see all the things that you guys have seen. I'm not saying they're not happening. I'm just I've been there a few times, and I didn't see any of that. My suggestion is that you have a mediation between him and the community before you, this is this and this is that. I think there needs to be an overall mediation between Steve and the community to make sure before you do the negotiations that everybody is on the same page. You understand where Steve is coming from and Steve understands where the community is coming from. So you'd like to see a forum where Steve would be here exactly. with all the neighbors. You'd like mm -hmm. to see that forum. Okay. Um, and so I heard you ask him 